Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR back with another episode of Pokemon Mega Speculation. So, after giving you guys more than enough time to vote, it seems that Mega Hydreigon will be the topic of this episode. So, here's a look at the bottom five, which means they will be cut out and replaced with five new random contestants. So, before we begin this episode, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button down below to show your support. So, for today's episode, we're going to structure it a bit differently. I'm actually going to start out with the design for Mega Hydreigon first because I believe it will play a large role in what happens to Hydreigon in regards to its typing, stats, and ability. So in the Pokemon Black and White beta, Dino, Zwilus, and Hydreigon were originally going to be more similar to dragons crossed with war tanks. Many people believe this would be an interesting concept to revisit with Hydreigon's Mega form, myself included. So here's a look at what a Mega Hydreigon tank could look like. Heck, this could actually be really close to Hydreigon's original design for all we know. Logically, if Hydreigon had to change types, it would be Dragon Steel. But as many of you pointed out to me in my Mega Flygon video, no Pokemon ever changes its primary type when it Mega Evolves, and as it turns out, Hydreigon is primarily a Dark type, not a Dragon type, which means that if it changes types upon Mega Evolving, it would actually be a Dark Steel type and not a Dragon Steel type. Personally, I think Dark Steel works out better. It gets to keep Stab for Dark Pulse while gaining stab from flash cannon as well. Huh, flash cannon. You know, like a cannon. Or a tank. Yeah, that works. An ability for Mega Hydreigon is kinda tricky. Some pseudo-legendaries were already powerful enough that they didn't need new abilities when they Mega Evolved. There are currently four pseudo-legendaries that are capable of Mega Evolving, and two of them keep their original abilities. So I think there's a good shot Hydreigon could keep Levitate. I mean, that would definitely help out with a ground weakness if it changes to a Steel-type. But if it has to change abilities, Mega Launcher seems like the obvious choice. Again, it sorta holds hands with the whole tank concept. Plus, it's very important to point out that Dragon Pulse gets boosted by Mega Launcher, so even though Hydreigon will lose its stab for Dragon Pulse by changing types, Dragon Pulse will still remain a powerful move thanks to Mega Launcher. Aura Sphere will be another common move that Hydreigon gets a boost from, and the most devastating of all will be Dark Pulse. A stab Dark Pulse already has 120 base power, but with Mega Launcher added on top of it, Dark Pulse's power grows to a whopping 180. So now we've got to formulate our full move set. If you want to go full offense mode, Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, Aura Sphere, and Flash Cannon seems like the way to go. If I wanted an alternative, I would swap out Dragon Pulse for Roost, just because I like to make the Mega Evolutions last a long time. Finally, the stats. Even though we don't have any use for physical attacks, you know Game Freak is gonna probably waste about 20 points there so it doesn't get too overpowered. Since it is a tank, I can see 20 points going into both defenses as well. And finally, the last 40 points can go into special attack. But wait, why are we not touching speed today? Well, I'm going to use my buddy Mega Garchomp as an example here. Obviously, Game Freak knew this thing would be unstoppable if they kept its speed the same, so they had to nerf it by 10 points. I feel like Mega Hydreigon would be in a similar situation if they buffed his speed at all. And tanks aren't exactly known for their speed, so I'm actually being kind of generous by not touching it. So that's all for Mega Hydreigon. Just like last time, there was a new poll in the description, so go check it out and be sure to vote. I'll see you guys next time.